on dear colleagues. I will talk today about my new research project entitled Textiles and Seals Relations between Textile Production and Seals and Sealing Practices in Bronze Age Greece that I'm directing in years 2018-2021. So this, what I'm going to talk about today, is just the first results after the first year of the project. In this project, I investigate a range of various data that were until now never explored together or as impressions of cordage and textiles on other sides of seal impressed lumps of clay, as on the example on the slide, never explored at all. Seal impressed textile tools is the second category of data that I'm going to investigate, and textile production related iconography of seals is the third point. In order to maintain all this data, an online database has been designed specifically for our project through the services of the Digital Competence Center of the University of Warsaw. And my aim today is to present this database as a useful research tool for studying multiple types of textile-related evidence from the Asian seals and settings. My presentation starts with a super brief introduction to Greece in the Bronze Age and Aegean Glyptic. Then I will shortly discuss the main research questions posited in the Texas and Seals Research Project and the types of the investigated evidence. Next, I will present the structure of the Texas and Seals database and discuss shortly its search engine. Although it needs to be remembered that as you can imagine, after the first year of the project, the data entry has not been accomplished and the search engine will be further developing. I will try to close my presentation with some preliminary conclusions. The Bronze Age in Greece covers the third and the second millennia BCE and uh, the Bronze Age cultures developed on lands around the agency. Uh, so they comprised Helladic and Mycenaean cultures on the mainland, Cycladic culture on the Cycladic and uh, Cycladis and Minoan on Crete. Seals were produced and used throughout the large part of the Bronze Age, however, with certain geochronological differences between Crete, Cycladis, and the mainland. The uninterrupted use of seals from early to late Bronze Age has been only attested in Crete. The main objectives of the Textiles and Seals project aim to reveal the structure and meaning of the relationship between textile production and seals and sealing practices. The complexity of this relationship may be tracked by investigating the following phenomena. The use of seals in the administrative practices related to textile production. That may be reflected by the practice of impressing seals on textile, loom, uh, or textile tools, specifically the loom weights. The use of textiles in general administrative practices as various holders of settings, for example, in a direct object setting, as tying cords or wrapping textiles, or perhaps even as goods that were subjected to setting themselves, and in a combination setting, as holders of bulle or flat-based noodles that were attached to other goods or documents. And the last phenomenon is textile production-related iconography of seals. It comprises depictions referring to raw materials such as um, sheep or flax, on sheep meaning wool, a deformation of threads, here we have a possible spindle, and weaving, and a symbolic references the spider. Obviously, all the discussed data require recording various information or parameters and consequently various scheduling various queries. A significant share of, informa of information is already available online. The main database collecting seals and sealings from the Aegean Bronze Age is the CMS Arachne, and CMS stands here for the Corpus der Minoischen und Mechanischen Siegel. And the vast majority of seal faces referred on the slide as the CMS numbers is available in the Arachne database. Also, several seal impressed objects are documented in another module of the Arachne. In the real world, the collection of silicone and plasticine casts of the undersides of clay settings is stored in the CMS archive in Heidelberg. 
and has been kindly made accessible for my studies, for which I thank the director of the archive, Professor Diamantis Panagiotopoulos and Dr. Maria Anastasiade. As regards the use of textiles in the sealing practices, the parameters of impressed cordage and textiles, as well as other organic surfaces, are of the major interest. However, the use of specific seals on specific seal impressed objects is also observed and recorded. Clay sealings may be impressed more times uh, and by more than one seal, such as the example on the slide, which is the pack sealing from Vano 25 in Festos, and sometimes the impression of one and the same seal may be found on more than one object. Potential cross-references among the main types of data are possible, but so far confirmed, actually confirmed twice, but you will see only one example, and this is the spool from Maria, but was impressed 10 times by a seal bearing a depiction of two spiders, which I read as a symbolic reference. The other um, example comes from Akrotiri, where in the Middle Bronze Age there was found a loom weight that was inscribed in linear A script, and one of the signs was um, is understood by the scholars as the sign resembling the piece of textile. According to the main types of data, the database is constructed of three modules, one documenting the impressions on textiles on clay, the second one for seal impressed textile tools, and the third for the iconography of textile production. The names of models which display online and which be then accessible to the open public are uh, the ones which are in the double brackets. As regards the number of records until now, we have recognized 183 examples of individual cordage and textile impressions, and I estimate that it's like three times more than that, and um, 258 seals bearing depictions of textile production related motif, motifs, including 173 and four sided prisms that multiplies the uh, number of the engraved seals three or the, the engraved seal faces three or four times respectively. Since data are still uh, being um, collecting, the set numbers may of course change. And here we have the seal impressed text I told them 47. I'm sorry, it skipped my attention somehow. And this number, the 47, will increase definitely because the, um, actually the seal impressed on max marked textiles were not really um, very carefully recorded, neither by textile scholars, neither by scholars who were interested in um, selling practices. Now, uh, let me show a short film made by the colleagues from the Digital Competence Center about operating the iconographic module of the database. The author of the presented animation is Wojciech Karpiński. Uh, it will show how the records are entered and what kind of information is um, recorded. After the general basic information about the identification, provenience, statistic and contextual dating, there is a section documenting the iconography, which we will see in a second. For the dating, we use also the slice time dating to make a um, broader horizon. And now we are coming to the iconography. So uh, all seal faces refer to the SMS volumes and the SMS online database, RACNA, if they are in this database. Motifs are described according to the SAMAS list of references or keywords, as well as the list of motifs distinguished by Maria Anastasiado in her monograph, who analyzed three-sided prisms, the stylistic group of seals that use the most frequent iconographic references to textile production. Textile motifs are defined by us, and you are free to merge or change the keywords. <laughs> In case of inscribed seals, as we will see in the second example on the film, um, which you will see um, in a second, 
We also record the individual signs and entire inscriptions, and the example on the film will show the written hieroglyphic script transcribed after the Sheik, which is the Corpus Hieroglyphicarum Inscriptionum Crete. Now, while the data input uh, is playing, let me give you some more information about the technical aspects of the database, but also its overall cost. The database was built by the Digital Competence Center of the University of Warsaw, which is the technology partner for all humanities at our university. And my special thanks go again to Piotr Kasprzyk, Dominik Purhała, and Eva Serafin Pursator, who collaborate with me. All software used to construct the database is free and open source. The application tailored to the base database requirements was written in Python using the Django framework. Data is being storing is in a PostgreSQL database and the Django admin module facilitates data input. The search and data visualization interface was built based on Bootstrap. The overall cost of the Digital Competence Center services are calculated only to 8,500 euro and they comprise design and implementation of the website and database, hosting domain SSL certificate, design, programming and implementation of the security and backstrap policy and automatic backstrap option, including restore options and general oversight over all IT aspects of the project. Now we'll see the data search, which is illustrated at first by the most frequent textile production related motifs so far recognized. This is the Lumwitz motif, represented by 75 examples, and the spider, spider would be the next. The general motif of the Lumwitz comprises several combinations, which you will see here, uh, including depictions of the warp weighted loom, as we could have seen one of them, and a combination of the loom weights with a male figure theme about, termed by us a weaver. And the weaver is represented, as we will see, by 26 examples. And I will have no time to talk about the methodological principles for distinguishing certain motifs. Of, of course, the iconography of silks is tricky, but this is also the part of the project. So the, um, the motifs are recognized according to the principles. Uh, now we will see the variations of the spider motif. And while the Lumwitz motif is characteristic for metal brands age elliptic from Crete exclusively, and especially the Maria Stratite prisms, the spider motif had been depicted throughout the entire Bronze Age, and now we can see its slightly later depictions stylistically belonging to the so-called talismanic group, and these are 15 examples. These are spiders. <laughs> <laughs> the example three shows how the combinations of motifs such as the loom weights and the spider are searched by the end word, which results in this case in searching uh, in search showing all seals that have these two motifs depicted on one face or or on two or more faces if this is a multi-faced seal. But what we need is also the search, um, we use the search with or keyword. And this one we use, especially when we combine the keywords from different systems, which are not exactly suited for our searches, like in this case from Arachne. And what we saw, there was a combination of the so-called waterbed motif with a spider. Two conclusions. The Textiles and Seals database already proved to be a very useful and helpful tool. It allows recording various types of data and parameters in a rigorous manner and with clarity. Since the database is accessible of online, it may be operated by more users simultaneously without worries about the consistency of the entered data. Yet the creation of such a database is not an easy process and requires a good communication between us, the archaeologists, and the software designers of developers. It also requires some elasticity in the official agreement since new ideas are appearing while using this tool and this appears on both sides. I mean, 
on the side of archaeologists or like me, but also the software designers may add a lot of things to that. Now, a short comment about the research potential of such database. Although several of the anticipated correlations and cross-references among the data are theoretically possible to track without a newly created database and search engine, practically the amount of work required by such searches would surely leave several observations unnoticed and several questions unanswered. The present search engine facilitates tracking combinations of data that have been not anticipated or expected previously, such as, for example, a, possi a possible semantic relation of scenes engraved on various seal faces of the multi-faced seals. Uh, until now, there was the general opinion that these um, depictions have no relations to each other. But um, uh, the repeating combinations um, of different motifs, such as the already mentioned the combination of the motif of lumoids and the motif of the spider with a so-called waterbed, uh, attested on 11 examples, appears to be also attested on the scenes related to taxa production on the attic pottery, and it was never explained, <laughs> neither for the attic pottery and taxa production, neither for the um, Aegean seals. Tracking more combinations of data from all modules of the database is expected, and these new possibilities are already opening paths for new questions, and even at this early stage of research, make its scope more specific and, as we believe, broader. Thank you very much for your attention.